Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is the first of many uh, videos in our AP Statistics curriculum here. Uh, we are starting with Chapter 2. Uh, this, All of the chapters come from the book Stats, Modeling the World by Bach, Bellman, and DeVoe. And uh, we are starting here to talk about data, the very first video in this course. So, uh, what are data or what is data? Uh, data is really, it's, it's everything, okay? Uh, data can be numbers, they can be names, they can be labels. They don't have to be represented uh, by numbers. They can be represented by words. Uh, anything can be, uh, can be considered data uh, as part of that collection. However, this data, these numbers, these labels, whatever they may be, they're useless when we don't put them into context. Uh, for example, uh, here's a, a data table. Okay, we've got all kinds of data in there, right? There's Mr. Dilly, there's golf, there's Bellingham, there's rolling dice, uh, there's some numbers in there, right? Uh, you might look at that and, uh, but what does it all mean? Okay, we, we have no, we have nothing to guide us, right? We need organization in order to be able to uh, understand what data is trying to tell us. And so we put some labels on the top right here, right? We've got uh, these labels on top that tell us what everything is. It's like, oh, okay, here's a list of teachers, Mr. Daly, Mr. Pierce, Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jensen, great. Uh, here's their favorite sports, rolling dice, golf, playing with cats, and basketball. Right? Here's their hometown, Kent, Oak Harbor, Burlington, Bellingham, et cetera, right? As we go through, uh, years of teaching is where we start talking about numbers. Mr. Daly's been teaching for eight years, Mr. Pierce, 15, Ms. Jones, four, Mr. Jensen, 110. This is an estimate, by the way, right? This is approximately 110. Um, it could be, we, we may need to like add a zero to that. I, I don't know, okay? I, I was guessing when I made this table up for him. But you, you get the point, okay? A, a, a Data is a number, it is uh, words, uh, it is a label, uh, it is something that we're collecting that goes uh, into some kind, of, some kind of category that we can uh, arrange and, and learn something from, okay? So, to provide context for uh, data, we have these things called the W's, which, you know, you've seen all of these words before because uh, in your English classes, uh, these are questions that we ask, and we can look at them in terms of the data as the same way that we would look at anything else. So it's who, what, where, when, why. Who are we measuring? That is, are we measuring people? Uh, are we measuring uh, the length of airplane wings? Are we measuring the distance of the rivets that has to be placed into an airplane wing, right? Uh, who are we measuring? The who doesn't have to be a person. It can be a thing, okay? Uh, what are we measuring, right? What are we measuring? Uh, and in what units? Are we measuring the length of something? Are we measuring how long something takes? Are we measuring the temperature? Uh, there's, there's many things that we can be measuring. The what uh, is kind of telling us um, a variable, right? Uh, it's telling us what we are, what is the thing that we are measuring. Uh, when was it measured? This makes a difference. When something was measured, if something was measured in 1992 versus 2012, they may have very different results because time plays a factor um, and there's lots of things that change in those that amount of time. Same thing with where was it measured. Uh, the place that something was measured also makes a difference because if we're measuring like annual rainfall, annual rainfall is different in Washington state than it is in Nevada, right? Or in Colorado, okay? The, 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 the ma land masses are different. So having, knowing where something was measured also uh, gives us a clue as to what the data means. Why was it measured? What was the purpose of the study, right? The purpose of the study gives us a clue as to, uh, first of all, what it is, what, what, what we're measuring, um, but it also tells us, like, purpose, right? Uh, things that people were thinking about when they did that. Um, also, how was it measured? Did we 
give people a survey? Did we grab random rivets off of the manufacturing line? Uh, did we look in a computer database and randomly pull individuals from there? Okay. Um, how it was measured is also important. Um, major note here, the who and the what are probably the most essential. Everything else is giving us information about the data, but the who and the what tell us very specifics of what it is we need. So um, we have a data table here, another data table here. Uh, we can see from this data table the who and the what. Okay? So here's my who's. Those are the rows. Who. Uh, everything over here on the right is information about the who. So Catherine H., was shipped to Ohio. What she bought was this price. The area code was this. Her previous CD purchase was Nashville, right? Okay, these are CD purchases apparently. Um, this is all information about Catherine H. So the who in this case is the row. Um, the what information is up here, right? These up here were the variables measured because we have. Uh, D a different state and country for places. We have different prices for people, area codes. These are all different things that were measured. These are the different variables that are associated with the who. So let's let's talk a little bit more about the who. What is the who? Okay, the who of the data tells us the individual cases for which or whom we have collected data. Um, these, if the, the individuals who answer a survey, we call these things respondents. Okay, um, people who we experiment on are usually called subjects or participants. If it's an animal, we call them experimental units. These are all just thing. These are all ex vocabulary words that we use to describe the who of a data set. Um, we sometimes have um, observations if we're not kind of like clear about what it is. If we're not sure it was a survey, a lot of times if it was pulled from a um, like an online source uh, or some kind of database, they might just be observations. But again, we need to know the who of the data so we can learn what the data says, right? The, the who of the data is important uh, because it, it, it gives us a context for which, the, uh, for which what we are measuring, okay? Uh, so what about the what and the why? The variables are characteristics recorded about each individual. Variables should have the name, a name that identify what has been measured. And to understand these variables, you must think about what you want to know. So, um, for example, okay, uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say for example yet. <laughs> variables, uh, one thing that we need to be careful of when we're talking about variables is that uh, they have a different meaning in statistics than you might have uh, remembered in your other max math classes. Uh, in algebra, and advanced algebra, pre-calculus, whatever, variable is like x or y. And it's the placeholder for a number or an expression. And we kind of mean it differently here. A variable in this case is really the what. Okay? It is what was measured. We're going to erase that <laughs> sign right there. It was what was measured. It gives us a, um, an idea, a variable is uh, what was measured from uh, the who that we, that we did end up measuring for something. Um, and we can have many variables measured for one who. Like I said, going back to this data table, we have many variables. Ship to the ship to state and slash country. That's a variable. Price is a variable. Area code is a pre is a is a variable. Notice that not all of these has numbers as answers, right? Nashville, Orange County. None of those those aren't all the same things. Um, so to understand these variables, you got to think about what you want to know. Um, some variables have units that tell us how each value has been measured and to tell you the scale of that measurement. Um, you've got a list of the different things that we, uh, the, the, the different base units for different things that we measure, right? Like distance, we have meters, mass, kilograms, etc. There are two types of variables, a categorical variable, 
or sometimes called a qualitative variable. It shows the names and categories, uh, excuse me, variable names and categories, variable names, categories, and answers questions about, about how cases fall into those categories. So for example, a category uh, example might be your gender or sex, your race, ethnicity. Think of it, I, I kind of think of it like there's buckets, right? Uh, the bucket here is, right, if this is the gender bucket, Right? Or if we're talking about gender, uh, this would be the male bucket and the female bucket. And if, uh, if it makes sense that we're saying, all right, uh, I'm male, so like we throw something in the male bucket, and then, or I'm female, and we throw something in the female bucket. And what we're essentially doing is like every time somebody puts something into the bucket, like here's, there's 10 marbles inside the female bucket, which means there's 10 females, okay? that's a categorical uh, a variable. If, if we can fit them, if we can throw it in a bucket like that, then it is categorical. Whereas a quantitative variable is a measured variable with units that answers questions about the quantity of what is being measured. So for example, income, right? I can't put income in a bucket. Income is continuous, right? There's, uh, you make, it's, you know, if we were to put it on a graph, we would have zero to a hundred thousand dollars a year. We have this, like, continuous amount that we would have of people making everything in between, okay? It's not, it's not a large bucket where we're one thing or the other. We fit on a continuum in this case. Height, same way weight, same way. Uh, they're fitting onto a continuum of things instead of being thrown inside buckets, okay? Notice also units. All of these have units, okay? Categorical variables in general do not have units. So if it has a unit, it's most likely a quantitative variable. However, if it doesn't have a unit, that doesn't mean that it's not quantitative. Again, the main thing we need to be able to do to figure out if it is uh, a categorical or quantitative is to ask about the why of the analysis. Why is something being measured? Um, the questions we ask a variable shape what we think about how we treat the variable. Because there are some cases where you might have um, something where you're not sure if it's categorical or quantitative. For example, uh, in a student evaluation of instruction at a large university, one question asks students to evaluate the statement the instructor was generally interested in teaching on the following scale, one, two, three, four, five. Is this categorical or is this quantitative? It has numbers, so we might be tempted to think it's quantitative. It's also on a continuous scale. We might be tempted to think it's quantitative, right? But on the other hand, um, we also can think about this. I'll go back to this slide. This could also be another bucket example, right? Uh, we've got five buckets that we're going to be putting our answers in. Uh, the one, two, three, four, or five buckets. Uh, we can say that this many people thought it was a one, and this many people thought it was a two, and this many people thought it was a three, uh, this many people thought it was a four, and this many people thought it was a five, okay? we could think about it in terms of buckets. So is this categorical or is this quantitative? Uh, the quantita th there could be a, a something for both. There's an order to these ratings, but there's no natural units. Variables like this that could be quantitative or categorical, we sometimes call ordinal variables. Now, this is not a terribly important vocabulary word that you should know. Um, however, uh, an ordinal variable can be categorical or quantitative, um, and we need to look at the why in order to decide what exactly it is, okay? So there's our who, what, why. Um, let's move on and actually talk about the where, when, and how. So you need the who, what, and why to analyze the data, but the more we know, the more we understand. The when and the where give us nice information about the context. Um, so to kind of continue to, well, for this example, values recorded at a large public university may mean something different than similar values recorded at a small private college. Um, if we're talking about like measuring GPA, 
and we're trying to figure out <clears throat> something nationwide, right? If we go to just a large public university and measure that one large public university, there might be significant differences between that and a small private university. A different uh, class of people may go to one college versus the other. So there's a problem um, when you read a study and this information about where it was done isn't given. Because if we don't know that it's been taken nationally, um, it could be something that's going to cause a, a problem in what we're looking at here. It's the same thing with uh, areas of, of when something was taken. Excuse me. Uh, if something was taken about uh, attitudes towards, uh, towards racism or attitudes towards uh, homosexuality, uh, a survey taken in 2015 may be significantly different or will be significantly different than a survey taken in 1965. And if you don't look at that information, you may be looking at something very wrong because uh, the difference between those attitudes in 1965 versus 2015 in America, right? And notice how I have to add that, that when in there or that where also, uh, they're significantly different, okay? Um, also, how the data are collected can make a difference between insight and nonsense. Uh, for example, Results from internet surveys are usually useless uh, because they, the people who are more likely to respond to an internet survey are <coughs> the people who are passionate about it. So when you read something that was just done online, you have to really question the results. Uh, it's the same thing if you're looking at like a news station. Um, MSNBC and Fox News do this all the time. It's like, hey, this was a Fox News poll that we took call into the show and answer this question, those numbers are useless because they're, if you talk about uh, the differences of the viewership in MSNBC and Fox, right, you get a very Democratic viewership in MSNBC and you get a very Republican viewership um, in, on Fox. And so a question about uh, whether or not you think the government is too big is going to be significantly different on MSNBC than it is on Fox. So those surveys tell us about the viewership of that channel, but not nationally. And so we always have to question it, right? The, the where, the when, and the how give us context that we need to know in order to recognize that this is good data, okay? So uh, that's really the end for chapter two. Uh, we've got some uh, activities that we're going to do in class to help us uh, revolve around these things a little bit, but that's everything here. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you guys have questions, feel free to always leave uh, a comment or uh, anything like that in the, uh, the video, and I will uh, do my best to get to those. And our, uh, if you, you want to contact me uh, in class or on Canvas or by email, all of those things are fantastic, okay? So thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you another time. Bye.